Hi guys, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. I am going to talk to you today about batteries in the... Today is, is the first installation in the Off-Grid Living and Battery Solar Panel Charge Controller and Power Inverter series that I will be teaching you in the coming days, weeks. So, what we have now is about the batteries. These are Trojan T105s that are about a year old and I'm going to talk to you about battery maintenance and battery voltages and the battery conditions which uh, this is a perfect moment to talk about the different modes on your battery and then I'm going to show you how to um, care for the water, uh, check the water and, and care for your batteries and maintain them. We are in float mode right now, which is a good thing, okay? There's three stages of battery charging. There is bulk mode, absorption mode, and float mode. When you're in, then there's also the equalize, which we'll cover separately. But when you're in float mode, you're doing pretty good. The bulk mode is when your batteries just start out in the morning, after a night of heavy use, and your solar panels, your solar charge controller is pumping all the energy it can into your batteries to bring them up to a certain voltage level. That's your, your, your bulk charge. So you're getting your bulk of your charging going on at that moment, at that time. Then when the batteries are coming up and they're getting near to finishing their charge and they're topping off higher, we'll, we'll go into what's called absorption mode. And then it goes into absorption mode for a while and there is where it's absorbing the extra energy to bring it up to a full charge. So your bulk is a fast bulk dump of energy into your battery bank. And I'm using layman's terms here. I'm not using technical terms. So all of you engineers, please don't have fits and slap me in the face virtually. I'm trying to just be very basic here. So anyway, you've got your bulk. Then you've got your absorption mode, which will go on for a period of time. And that's a more gentle charging uh, current where it tapers off and then you get your float mode which is basically I'm sure you've heard of a float charger and a battery maintainer that keeps you in float mode and maintains your battery voltage at a low wattage uh, 3.7 amps really low 40 watts or so the energy is bringing in about one amp so nothing major just floating the batteries and keeping them at the finishing voltage. Uh, 13 and a half volts, it's a lower voltage. Whereas with your bulk charge and your absorption mode, you'll see 14 and even sometimes as high as 15 volts depending on your battery bank. Now, don't worry, don't let this overwhelm you. If you have a good charge controller, that's going to take care of all of this for you. All right. You don't have to care about a thing with the different types of charge status and charge modes if you have a good solar charge controller. What your bottom line is you're going to be looking at the battery voltage while your batteries are being used and especially in the evening when the sun has gone down and you're now drawing from your batteries rather than putting current and charge into your batteries. So. Hopefully that explains. If you don't understand it well, go on over to the article where I will have this in all detail and uh, explain it more thoroughly and probably more clearly because I'm just rattling this off at the top of my head and trying to use simple terms. So the doityourselfworld.com slash articles where I'll have the link below and in the description at the end of the video or at the, uh, at the end of the video a clickable link and in the description below. So. Now, once a week I would advise, depending on how aggressive your charging system is, uh, if not, if you have a really aggressive system with a lot of solar panels, I would check your batteries every three days. But at the very least, once a week. Now, you want to take off the caps and you want to check the water levels inside your batteries, each and every one, okay? If your battery's water gets too low, you will physically damage and destroy your batteries. Okay? Very important that you do that regularly. 
And let me grab it here. You want to use distilled water only. Never use tap water. Don't use rain water. Nothing but distilled water goes into your batteries. Don't put acid in your batteries. Just distilled water for topping off your batteries. So to check your battery's water level, it's a simple matter of pulling off the caps. Now, I'm not in a, there's nothing going on here aggressively. And I'll mention equalized mode in a minute. If these were in equalized mode, or if the sun was shining, or if we were using some heavy current, these would be boiling. You can hear them. You can hear them boiling. Right now it's very gentle. Everything's quiet. So I can reach here and I can open this up. Also, I know my battery bank, okay? And I just washed this entire system with, uh, well, a few hours ago, I washed the entire system with baking soda and water. And then I rinsed them ent entirely with fresh water. So that's why you see they're all wet. If you're not sure about your batteries, wear rubber gloves, wear protective clothing. Okay, if you're not sure, um, I would advise it anyway, wearing rubber gloves and protective clothing. Okay, I've been around batteries my whole life and acid doesn't really bug me too much. I go and I wash it off. So you pop the caps, okay, and I'm trying to do this one-handed. You pop the caps off, and I don't set this down in a dirty place. I either hold it in my hand, or I set it off on the battery bank like this, okay? Upside down. You don't want any dirt getting inside. Now, I should have a flashlight. Let me see if you can see the level. Yeah, you can see the water level. See that? All right, the water level in there. If I had a flashlight, you'll see that the water level is well above the plates inside the batteries. You never want to have the water get below the level of the plates. Now let's see we have this much space between the plates and the top of the battery filler neck. You want it about half of that filled. Okay, You want it just a little bit above the, the, the very top of the battery. So between the plates and the top filler you want roughly about half of that. Now every battery is different so there's no um, every single battery is different. The fill level is different so this is just a rough idea for you to go halfway between the top of the plates and the top of the filler neck, okay? Then you're, you know, you can't go wrong like that. And check every one of your batteries and make sure that they are filled. And then pop that cap back on. Make sure you pop it gently with your hand two, three places. Now I am going to wash my hands when I'm done before I even touch the camera with this hand. Although I'm sure there's no acid here. Again, for your own safety, use protective gear. I just washed the system so I know it's good and acid, I've had acid on my hands before um, but it's nothing you want to play with, okay? Another thing, don't have any jewelry, metal, metal uh, necklaces or anything dangling with you or on you when you're working around the batteries. You can get hundreds if not thousands of amps instantaneously passing through that metal around your neck and it's not going to feel good. Um, this, these batteries have the ability to liquefy metal in a, in, a, in a fraction of a second if you touch it across the plus and minus terminals accidentally. Um, you do have, your, your body has a high resistance, so generally you can touch the terminals with your bare hand without experiencing any, any danger, but mine are wet, so always just proceed with caution. Never, trying to never touch the plus and minus terminals with your hand or shirt them with metal or with anything at all and you'll live a long happy life at least as far as that's concerned um, battery terminals they will get gunked up with time I'm gonna have to take this off and hit it with a wire brush and then there's some there's different things you can use there's battery terminal uh, felt there's it's like a green and red felt you can put on there but that's more for your car batteries with the big round terminals. With these screw-on ones, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to clean it with a wire brush and some uh, baking soda and water. All right, and that'll neutralize the acid in here and on the terminal. And then I'll clean the terminal itself, and then I'll put some um, terminal protective spray, which they actually sell in auto parts stores, on all of that and then put it back together and that'll protect it for the next time around and keep it from corroding 
Now for some reason I only have one terminal on this entire thing is corroding on me. I don't know why. There's This one is a little bit, but this one here is the one that's bad. All the others are pretty good. So you're always going to get one that's going to give you trouble. That one's actually blackened from the, the corrosion coming out. All the others are nice. Um, now, absorption, uh, equalize mode. Once a month, if you have a good battery uh, solar charge controller, once a month you want to go into what's called equalize mode, which in, on my bank, on my system is about 15.34 volts is what I see uh, coming out of that. Now, equalize mode basically boils the liquid in your batteries. It's a higher current, higher voltage, and it's going to boil the liquid in your batteries. And you'll hear them bubbling furiously. And what that does is it breaks up all the, the crystals on the lead plates and recombines it with the, the chemistry in the battery and prevents sulfation of the plates. So that's important once every 30 days to boil your batteries in equalized mode. Now, with a good charge controller, that's going to do that for you automatically. Problem with that, your power inverters are not going to like that at all. They're going to go into a over-voltage mode, beep, whine, complain, or shut down. So, it's best if you set your equalized mode on a day when you're not going to be home, and when you have enough sunlight. Today, I would never be able to go into equalized mode because there's no, uh, not much solar. I'm very pleased that I am in float mode considering the fact that the uh, sun is not shining. Now, battery temperature. Temperature will affect your batteries. Extreme heat and extreme cold will affect the performance of your batteries. A very cold battery will have a reduced power output and overall usable energy capacity so will a very hot battery. So batteries prefer to be in a nice happy medium range. Um, I'd say between 55 and 75 degrees. People may argue with that. I'm throwing this off the top of my head. But there's a happy range for batteries where they produce the most amount of power and have the maximum capacity. I have obviously here at the off-grid homestead you've often seen freezing cold conditions and those conditions will reduce the battery capacity. It doesn't harm your batteries as long as they're getting the charge they need each day, but your battery voltage each day is going to be lower on a cold day. The actual battery voltage will be lower on a colder day than it will be on a warm day. So that's going to affect your usable energy. Now a hot day will also adversely affect your batteries. So you want to keep them at a nice comfortable temperature uh, out of the sun, out of the heat and the sun will also deteriorate your battery casings and make them rot because it's plastic and you don't want that either. Um, vibration, any excess motion, all these things are bad for your batteries. So keep them out of the sun in a nice cool but not cold area and you'll be good to go. Battery voltages. Okay, now I'm going off the top of my head, so refer to the article, please, when we cover this. I will definitely check my numbers before I write the article. But because I'm standing here going off the top of my head, I'm going to tell you my preferences, which some people will say is over careful. The deeper you discharge a battery, daily on a daily basis the le the shorter your battery life the less you discharge your battery on a regular basis the longer the battery life the idea also another thing is the longer a battery is left in a discharge state before it's recharged the lower the battery life overall um, if you use your batteries gently and keep them topped up topped off always and do your equalization regularly your batteries should have a very long life now some people are argue with me and say batteries need to be used I from what my studies and reading everywhere on all the battery places 
all the major battery manufacturers tell you that a more gently used battery is going to last you longer. Now I have people that are going to argue in the comments, but uh, this is from what I've read on the battery manufacturers websites. It is a fact that if you discharge a battery and it remains in a discharge state, it will start to deteriorate. The sooner you recharge your battery bank after use, the longer the life. That's very important. So you need to have your solar panels set up so that you have enough panels that when the sun comes up in the day, you can top those batteries back off every day and get into float mode every day. If you're not seeing float mode, you're not helping your batteries. You're causing harm. I've got float mode, that's good. If you're in absorption mode, that's good. But if you don't see float, you're in trouble. You're harming your batteries. So you should see float mode every day. Uh, it takes down the battery life. I don't like to see my batteries go below 12.5 volts. Some people say that's still fully charged, but I baby my batteries. I don't like to see anything below 12.5. In emergency situations, I've gone as low as 12.2. And I will give you a chart with status of charge on the article. But I just, myself, try to keep them above 12.5 for best life. And again, there's, there's definitely people with different opinions. And also, every battery type is different. In the voltages of your battery type, there's lead acid, there's AGMs, there's um, forklift batteries, there's traction batteries, the um, L16s, those are the super tall ones. There are different types of batteries, and different types of batteries require different care and different voltage levels for each of your different uh, stages in charging. So check out the article for the details on voltages and I'll give you an average general idea of what's good for your batteries, okay? So I think that covers it, everybody. And if I think of anything else in the meantime, I will add it to the article. But that's how you take care of your batteries. Never add chemicals, never add acid. Distilled water only. Keep your batteries full, keep them charged up. Recharge them as fast as you can each day, and you should have healthy batteries for many years to come. Get a good solar charge controller. I don't want to get into charge controllers too much right now. That's a separate video. But the better you can afford, the better your batteries are going to be. The cheap little tiny charge controllers are going to kill your batteries. Plain and simple. Alright guys, battery basics, battery maintenance. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Talk to you later.